In this presentation, we will continue our discussion on string operators in Python. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is membership operators. The second topic is escape sequence operator. And the third topic is string formatting operator. We will understand these topics one by one. Let's start from the first topic that is membership operators. So, what are membership operators in Python? There are two types of membership operators in Python. The first operator is in operator and the second operator is not in operator. Let's first understand what is in operator. The in operator is called the membership operator and it returns true if the first operand is contained within the second operand. So, in operator is a binary operator which needs two operands. If the first operand is contained within the second operand, then it returns true, otherwise it returns false. For example, let's go to our command prompt and activate the Python interactive shell. Now, we are ready to type in the commands. Let's type this command, just in just breathe. If we hit enter, we will get true as a result. Why? According to the definition, the membership operator in returns true if the first operand is contained within the second operand. This is the first operand and this is the second operand. Just the string, exactly this sequence, is contained within this sequence and this is the reason why in operator is returning true. Now, let's type one more command, p in just breathe. This character is contained within this sequence, hence in operator will return true. Now, what if we type this command, pta in just breathe? This sequence is not contained within this sequence. I am talking about the exact sequence, not the individual characters. P is there in this string. T is also there in this string. A is also there in this string. But PTA, the sequence, is not contained in this string. This exact sequence does not exist in this string. So, in operator in this case will return false. I hope the in operator is clear. Let's move on to the next operator, that is the not in operator. The membership operator not in returns true if the first operand is not contained within the second operand. So, it does the opposite of what in operator does. It returns true if the first operand is not contained within the second operand. Let's move to our command prompt and this time let's type just not in just breathe. So, in place of in, we should type not in and let's hit enter and let's see what not in operator results. It returns false, but why? Just is contained in just breathe. Not in operator does the opposite of what in operator does. It returns false in this case because it is not the case that just is not in just breathe. Just is actually there in just breathe. So, it returns false. Now, what about this command? P not in just breathe. This also returns false. What about this? PTA not in just breathe. Now, this one returns true because this sequence is not contained in this sequence. I am talking about this exact sequence, not the individual characters. So, we are done with not in operator as well. Let's move on to our next topic that is escape sequence operator. We are done with membership operators. Now, we are ready to understand escape sequence operator. So, what is an escape sequence operator? Before understanding what an escape sequence operator is, we first need to understand the meaning of escape character. So, let's understand what is the meaning of escape character, which helps us in understanding what is an escape sequence operator. An escape character is used to insert a non-allowed character in a string. So, if we are interested in inserting a non-allowed character in a string, we can do that using escape character. Escape character consists of escape operator or in other words, escape sequence operator backslash followed by a non-allowed character. So, an escape character consists of escape operator and a non-allowed character that we want to insert. So, an escape character is a combination of two characters. One is the escape operator and the other one is the non-allowed character we want to insert. 
Let's consider one simple example to better understand this concept. Let's go to our command prompt and let's type print I am just Preet and I am from India. India must be written within double quotes. Now, if we hit enter, we'll get syntax error, invalid syntax. Why is that the case? We have seen this case already in our previous presentations. India is enclosed within double quotes, but we are not allowed to insert double quotes within the string. Double quotes can only be used to wrap the entire string. We cannot use them within the string, like this. But we are allowed to escape them, or in other words, we can include them if we convert these quotes into escape characters. For this, we need to add backslash in front of these quotes. Now, if we type print I am just Preet and I am from backslash double quote India full stop then backslash double quote, we would be able to escape these double quotes. Let's hit enter and this time we'll get this string I am just Preet and I am from India. As it can be observed, these quotation marks are escaped and they are now treated as part of the string. So, in this way, we can escape non allowed characters in a string. Python allows us to include non allowed characters if we convert them to escape characters. And we can convert them to escape characters by adding backslash in front of them. That's it. Apart from this, we have some common escape characters which we must know. Some escape characters, some common ones, include backslash n, which stands for new line, backslash b, which stands for backspace, backslash t, which stands for tab, double backslash, which helps us in inserting a backslash in our string. Otherwise, we won't be able to insert it. Backslash triple o to insert an octal number, backslash xhh to insert a hexadecimal number. Now, in order to see these escape characters in action, we'll consider one more example where we will include some of these characters in a string. So, let's go to our command prompt once again and this time let's type print I am just Preet and this entire string, this cryptic looking string. Now, if we hit enter, we'll get this string. Interesting. We have this cryptic looking string. But we are getting this as a result. Why is that the case? We need to decode this string. First, we can observe that after AND, we got a new line. The rest of the string is written in new line. But why is that the case? Because we have added this backslash n here. Backslash n indicates new line. So it will add a new line after this AND. Now, after this, we have I am which will get printed as it is. Then after this I am, we have backslash x66 rom. Now, what does it mean? We know that backslash xhh is used to insert a hexadecimal number. hh here represents the two-digit hexadecimal number. So, we can add a two-digit hexadecimal number in our string. Here we are adding this 66. Internally, this will be converted to a decimal number. A hexadecimal number can be converted to a decimal number by multiplying each digit by its place value. Then, we should add the results. Here, we need to multiply 6 by 16 to the power 0, which is the place value for this 6. And here, we need to multiply this 6 by 16 to the power 1. And then, we need to add them. This will give us the equivalent decimal number. We will get 102 as a result, which you can check on your own. We'll get 102, which is the ASCII code of the letter F. This is the reason why we are getting F here. And then after this, we have ROM, which will get printed as it is. So, this is the reason why we are getting from here. Similarly, backslash 141 will get converted to decimal. This represents an octal number as it is following this exact format. Triple O represents three-digit octal number. So, here we have three-digit octal number 141. Internally, this will get converted to a decimal number. Here, we need to multiply each digit by its place value and then we need to add them in order to obtain the decimal equivalent of this number. 
So we need to multiply 1 by 8 to the power 0. We need to multiply this 4 by 8 to the power 1. And we need to multiply this 1 by 8 to the power 2. And then finally we need to add them. Eventually we will get 97 as a result. So 97 is the equivalent decimal value of this octal value. Decimal value 97 represents the ASCII code of character A. So this is the reason why we are getting A here. And of course these double quotes are escaped because we have added backslash in front of them. This means we have converted them to escape characters. So these are all different escape characters we can include in our string. Of course we have more like backslash b, backslash t, we have double backslash. We have many more but these are the common ones which we use in our strings. So, we are done with escape sequence operator also. We have understood what is an escape character and how we can use escape characters in our string. Now we are ready to understand the next topic that is string formatting operator. So, what is a string formatting operator? String formatting operator percentage is used to format a string. So, if you want to format a string in a different way, we can do that with string formatting operator. We have percentage %d, percentage %c, percentage %s and percentage %f. These are commonly used string formatters. These are called string formatters which helps us in including external values in our string. So we can include a decimal value or integer using percentage %d. We can include an external character in a string by using percentage %c. We can include an external string in our string by using percentage %s. We can include some substring in our string. And we are also allowed to insert a floating point value in our string by using percentage %f. So if let's say we have a variable and that variable is pointing to some value, we can insert that value in our string by using these formatters which we call string formatters and sometimes we call them format specifiers. Okay, so this is another way of saying the same thing. String formatters or format specifiers, they both mean the same thing. Now let's discuss one example to better understand this concept. Let's go to our command prompt and this time I want you to type age equal to 28. Age is the name given to this value 28. So this must be the age of some person. Now if we hit enter, we can see there is no error. Now if we type print my age is percentage %d percentage age. This is our string my age is percentage %d. This string ends here. After this we have percentage sign. Then we have the name of the variable. We want to insert the value 28 in our string. Although we can directly write 28 here. But let's say in future if we want to change the value. Then we can directly change it here in this variable and we can use that value in our string without the need of modifying the string. So in place of writing 28 here directly, we can add a string formatter here. This will allow us to add this value from this variable. So in order to use this variable, we first need to put the percentage %d in its correct place. We want this percentage %d to be written here. After this, we need to add this percentage sign. Then we need to specify the name of the variable which will provide the value to this percentage %d at runtime. I hope this concept makes sense. Age will be provided to percentage %d. This means 28 will be provided to percentage %d at the time when we run the code, at the time of evaluation. If we hit enter, we know that Python will evaluate this piece of code. This means eventually, this percentage %d will get replaced by age, that is value contained in age, which is 28. So we'll get this output, my age is 28. I hope this concept is clear. In this way, we can include a floating point value, a string, a character from the external source in our string. So we are done with string formatting operator also. I hope this lecture is clear. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I'll see you in the next one.